There are a number of artifacts found at varying parts of the world, which, due to the immense age of the strata they were discovered within, fly in the face of current paradigms in regards to the chronology of man. Iron pots, zinc vases, even imprints of ancient chariot wheels, found in numerous coal seams, and found by people in positions of responsibility, whom often testify not only in regards to their legitimacy, but are often accompanied by the lump of coal in which they were found, still possessing the intriguing imprint upon their surface, undeniably supporting the testimonies of these individuals, all but proving authenticity beyond doubt. Like that of the iron pot and its accompanying coal block, which was its tomb, carbon dating has indicated that the pot is an astonishing 300 million years old. However, as time goes on and coal mining, along with many other mining activities, becomes more rapid and advanced in nature, it is simply a matter of time before even more mysterious and unexplainable artifacts are also found. Unfortunately, due to the controversial nature of these artifacts, it is very likely that a number of them have either been shrugged off or actively destroyed before ever achieving widespread acclaim. However, fortunately, the next artifact of interest, just like that of the many others we have previously covered, can not only be seen as yet another smoking gun, indicating that there has been a number of advanced phases within human civilization, but yet again, this timeline could, in all possibility, date back an astonishing 300 million years. Although modern society has been taught that we are at the height of human accomplishments, many of these techniques we currently claim as our own accomplishments could have been achieved an unimaginably long time ago, far back within Earth's history. Dated to the same age as that of a number of other artifacts, which we have covered in the past, a group of brass doorknobs were once abandoned, eventually finding their way into a coal seam, which has been dated as 300 million year old geology. Found still encased within this ancient strata, these astonishing artifacts are undeniably of an incredible age. Unfortunately, and rather predictably, not much has been done in regard to mainstream investigation into said artifacts and their current location, if indeed still in existence, is unclear. Yet fortunately, before their disappearance, photographic evidence was taken, subsequently allowing us to add it to the volume of research and artifacts which not only support our posit of lost civilization, but place human activities an impressive 300 million years back into Earth's history. Who made these brass doorknobs? Could we really be a civilization hundreds of millions of years old? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Beit Sherim is an ancient cemetery located within Galilee. Very close by is a natural cave. It had apparently fallen into disuse at the end of the 4th century and filled up partially with 4 or 5 feet of clay-like silt. In 1956, a bulldozer was taken in to clear the rubble, but what it would uncover can be seen as an enormous upart, an out-of-place artifact. It turned out to be a large ancient rectangular slab made from an unknown material. Because of its size, measuring 6.5 by 11 feet long, 18 inches thick and weighing in at over 9 tons, it was not surprisingly left where it lay. With a perfectly level surface, its origins were a mystery, yet alas, at the time, not a pressing one. However, in 1963, members of a joint expedition of the Corning Museum of Glass and the University of Missouri would bring to light a curious reality. While surveying the region for possible remains of ancient glass factories, someone suggested that the Bet Sharim slab might have been made of glass. A suggestion initially perceived as a joke. Amazingly, chemical analysis was indeed carried out, confirming that this enormous and extremely ancient slab was indeed made of glass. It is therefore believed that the Bet Sharim slab is a huge piece of first stage glass meant to have been broken up and fashioned into objects somewhere else that for some reason was abandoned right where it was made. In conclusion, 
Several factors surrounding the existence of the slab are currently unexplainable. According to mainstream views surrounding the evolution of glassmaking, the production of such an enormous base material would have been simply impossible, requiring over 12 tons of raw materials, over 20 tons of furnace fuel, the maintaining of a temperature of over 1100 degrees centigrade for no less than five continuous days, finally producing a nine-ton slab of perfectly level, perfectly rectangular glass, clearly demonstrates the requirement of a highly advanced refinery with highly advanced technologies harnessed by a past civilization. Additionally, at the time of its discovery, only two other pieces of glass have ever been created that are larger. Both rest within the enormous telescopic mirrors of machines developed within the past century. It seems clear to us that the Beth Sharim slab is one of those rare gems that clearly demonstrates the past existence of a highly advanced, highly capable ancient civilization that once lived and was unfortunately lost here on Earth. The chronological dating of our technological development and capabilities within antiquity are often correlated and judged upon the developments within heat management of metal refinery. For example, one of our strongest arguments against the modern-day attested view that ancient Egyptians were the builders of the Sphinx, the pyramids, the tombs, etc., is partly based upon their lack of ability in heating a furnace to a sufficient enough temperature to create the hardened metal tools needed to penetrate and carve such hard stones. The Nanjing Belt is an extremely rare find that has unsurprisingly vanished from public view, preventing any further analysis, although the existence of these artifacts was officially noted in several places and was indeed analyzed by several specialists. What is amazing regarding the Nanjing Belt is its age, but most importantly, what it is made of. In 1952, two tombs were found within Yixing City in China. One of the tombs also had a clear date inscribed upon its inside. It stated that they were buried on the 20th of September of the 7th year of Yuan Kang, the late general of Zhao, 1700 years ago. When the belt was initially retrieved, it was sent for analysis at the chemistry department of Nanjing University. The results were astonishing. 10% copper, 5% manganese, and the remaining was 85% pure aluminum. However, the development of aluminum is a very modern achievement, requiring extreme heats to smelt, heats that we believe were impossible to manage at the time. Alumina is dissolved in molten cryolite at 1000 degrees C, with a melting point of pure alumina being 2054 degrees Celsius. So, the question persists, how could such an artifact exist? A question once taken up in the West by three scholars, Butler, Glidewell, and Pritchard at St. Andrews University. The abstract sums up their work, quote, Pieces of aluminum, supposedly parts of a set of belt ornaments, were found in a Jing Dynasty tomb during excavations in the 1950s. The authenticity of these finds was questioned at the time in view of the technology required to isolate aluminum from its ore. Examination of the thermodynamic requirement for this process demonstrates unequivocally that the temperature required for this process is greatly in excess of that possible with Jing Dynasty technology, and so the finds cannot be authentic. Unfortunately, again, we find ourselves in familiar waters. So-called scholars, three in fact, with a conclusion based solely upon historical assumptions. Unfortunately, the artifact was seemingly too controversial for some, and it has disappeared, sadly, quite possibly forever. During excavations within the Kiziltipi district of southeastern Mardin in southeast Turkey, a marvelous, miraculous, and to this day unexplained artifact was discovered. A pure nugget of historical gold, ticking all the boxes of desirability when it comes to our research here at Mystery History. The wheel is by far the most important invention man has ever realized, and it is indeed recognized as such the world over. The official attested account for the origin of the wheel 
is given to the late Aceramic Neolithic between 9500 to 6500 BCE and could be seen in conjunction with other technological advances as that which gave rise to the Early Bronze Age. The official kept academic record regarding the evolution of the wheel is largely accepted as follows. 4500 to 3300 BCE, Chalcolithic Era, invention of the potter's wheel. 3300 to 2200 BCE, Early Bronze Age. 2200 to 1550 BCE, Middle Bronze Age, invention of the spoked wheel and the chariot. When, on occasion, we are confronted with artifacts reluctantly accepted by these same academic fields of study as authentic, demonstrating through their existence that mainstream paradigm is to be vastly incorrect, we feel a mix of frustration and vindication. We also strongly feel that it is imperative we share such finds with one another to further all of our understandings regarding our past. To hopefully break the spell slowly cast over years of incorrect and largely incomplete information. According to the culture and tourism director of Marden, Davut Belikte, the car is like a copy of cars today. He also pointed out that the shape of this ancient toy resembles that of a tractor. Belikte revealed that strange toy dolls and whistles, also made of stone, were also found at the site. We believe that the whistles and dolls to be well over 5,000 to 6,000 years old, with the whistles still in working condition, he said. Along with these ancient figurines was also a mysterious stone tablet, inscribed with an ancient text. After extensive historical analysis, the writing on the 5 centimeter long stone was deemed to be that of an ancient title deed. The content of the deed refers to a fruit garden and the fruit trees within, which are to be split between the three sons of the owner. Clearly, the behavior of people far more advanced than that of Stone Age people, a premise we are expected to believe is accurate. Belikte has confirmed that comprehensive information on the two finds will be provided soon. Is this little ancient toy car perhaps the earliest evidence of the wheel we will ever find? Or is it just the tip of an evidential iceberg of a secret far larger. Throughout the world, many ancient sites have produced perplexing ancient stone carvings of hugely varying size. Some of the ancient relics found are of a perfect sphere, while others feature extremely detailed and as yet unexplained carvings completed with as yet unknown methods or technology. The largest amongst this perplexing group of artifacts are undoubtedly the land pearls. Some of the most impressive are to be found within Costa Rica. Perfectly spherical stones, which although claimed to be natural, are clearly highly perplexing ancient objects. Parallel to the land pearls are the many tiny artifacts that have been unearthed at many different sites around the globe. The Klerksdorp spheres, for example, found upon the African continent are typically found to be ranging in diameter from 0.5 to 10 centimeters. These stones also vary widely in shape, from flattened spheres to well-defined disks. Petrographic and X-ray diffraction analysis of specimens found that they consist either of hermitite or wollastonite, and all of the specimens which were cut open exhibited an extremely well-defined radial structure terminating at the center of the Klerksdorp sphere. Some of these objects exhibit well-defined and parallel longitudinal grooves or ridges, which many have claimed are artificial additions. These artifacts have been dated at an astonishing 3 billion years old. Additionally, some of the other more perplexing ancient carved stone balls, now known as petrospheres, have also been found in Scotland and England. They range from having no ornamentation to extensive and highly varied complex patterns. A wide range of theories have been produced to explain their use or significance, although their true purpose remains a mystery. Yet thanks to the complex designs added to these Scottish petrospheres, they are undeniably man-made, and as such, predictably, they have only been dated to a mere 5,000 years old. Many of the stones have unfortunately never had their discovery site recorded, and most are found as a result of agricultural activity. 
five found at Scarabray Village, and one at the Dunnett Hill Fort, yet other noted sites remain elusive. Interestingly, the distribution of the stones is similar to that of mace heads, weapons, and prestige objects that were often used in ceremonial situations. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling.